I like to think that by the grace of God, that the church is like the ants, the march of the ants. You know, like the ants. What scripture is that? It's, uh, it's Tolkien. <laughs> uh, talking about uh, the two towers, Isengard. And the ants, they look around and they say, I, uh, I'm on nobody's side. I'm not on Gandalf's side or Saruman. I'm on nobody's side because no one is on my side. And that's how I feel in this given moment. All right, Russia and Ukraine. I'm on nobody's side. I'm not a fan of Putin. I think he's a war thug. I'm sure as heck not a fan of Ukraine. I think they're the money purse of the most corrupt politicians in the entire world. I feel somewhat similar about Israel and pa Palestine. I'm no fan of Hamas. They're Islam Islamic terrorists. And if God doesn't mercifully intervene and save them, they're going to hell. But when I look at Israel and I look at Ukraine, I feel like I'm looking at the same picture. Israel's not a bastion of Judeo-Christian values, which is an oxymoron. Israel, like America, not trying to just pick on them, it's a bastion of the rainbow flag. Exporting perversion around the world. I'm on nobody's side because nobody's on my side. Nobody's on my side. Nobody's on America's side. Right? We're all Christian nationalists if we're talking about any nation except for ours. Right? We'll send billions to Ukraine, billions to Israel. Right? You can be a Christian nationalist if we're talking about being a Zionist. You can be a Christian nationalist if you're talking about this place or that place or anywhere. But, but you can't ever do anything for your own people. Nobody's on your side, brothers and sisters. You just need to wake up to that. You need to know that. Get it deep in your bones. Wake up. Nobody's on your side. I'm on no one's side because nobody is on my side. But here's what the ints eventually do. Eventually, they get kind of tricked by these little tiny hobbits. And they get just close enough to Isengard to see how terrible Saruman actually is. They get woken up, kind of like a 2020, 2021, 2022 kind of situation. They, they get awakened to see how bad trash world really is, how bad clown world really is. That the world, the unbelieving world, they're not actually neutral. They're not willing to coexist. They're not willing to go along, to get along. They actually want to take your children, destroy your lives. They hate every biblical principle. And then what happens is that when the ants get close enough to Isengard, to see what Saruman has done, uprooting other trees, their friends, and, and burning them, then all of a sudden they go into a righteous rage. The church needs to be angry today. Righteously angry. Jesus is meek and mild. We want to look like him, but he's not only meek and mild. John chapter 2, Jesus was fashioning a whip with cords. He was throwing over the money changers' tables, releasing all the livestock, and whipping out these thieves out of his father's house. Get out of here. Don't desecrate my father's house. My father's house is not a den of thieves, but it is a house of prayer for all nations. And I believe that as difficult as things have been, there is not only a silver lining, I think it's more than just that. It's an incredible mercy in the providence of God that people are waking up. The temperature slowly turned up on the boiling pot of water so that the frogs are eventually boiled alive. They, they, never, they ne never realize how hot it's getting. They never jump out of the pot. But, but in 2020, these last three years since then, what Trash World has done is they got a little cocky. And they, they thought, you know what? We're already close enough. We can, just, we can just finish it up. And they turned up the knob suddenly. And a lot of frogs stayed in the water because their nerve endings were already shot. But a few that still had a little breath in their lungs, 
felt the temperature rise for the first time and realized this isn't a party in a hot tub, this is dinner. And they jumped out and they're starting to fight back. Like the ants, seeing what Saruman was actually up to and the ants will now go to war. The church is a sleeping giant. The church is the most powerful, formidable force in all the world, in all human history. It's not a singular nation. It's not a military. It is the church of Jesus Christ. It is the battering ram of Christ and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But she has to wake up. She has to wake up. And in the mercy of God, I believe she is. And she's a sleeping giant. And when she rouses from her slumber, and I would argue it's not just a 60-year slumber from the sexual revolution of the 1960s. It's not just a boomer slumber. It's not even just 120 or 130 years. I think it's a slumber that's been going on for a long time. I would track it back at least to the Enlightenment. But I do believe that by the grace of God, this sleeping giant can wake once more. 